What up, everybody? What up? What what up? Uh, in my last video, I wanted to show you how I wrote a notice of removal from the state county court to uh, a federal court here in San Diego. So I actually found the case. Here, here was the case number, even though it was short lived. And uh, just want to show you that your boy, your boy gonna fight. <laughs> your boy gonna fight. If it if it's in a book somewhere, I'm gonna find the motherfucker. I'm not the average motherfucker. Oh, if you put it in the book, you probably won't find it. I'm gonna find the motherfucker. Or my team gonna find the motherfucker. So I'm not fucking around. I know they not fucking around. So uh, as long as I'm armed with the knowledge and I got a heart, I'm gonna be fighting. <clears throat> but it's better to fight as a team than to fight by yourself. But, you know, some people are up there, that, you know, the enemy likes to divide and conquer. So, trust me, man, these people, before I get into this, these people have uh, been plotting for centuries to take your rights. This shit didn't just pop out of the blue. You got the Council on Foreign Relations, you got the Knights of Malta, you got the Vatican, you got the, uh, uh, well, Illuminati is kind of played out because everybody knows what it is, but they still operate in the darkness, homie. Um, uh, certain Freemasons, the Bilderberg group, um, there's people, government, there's people who control government. Uh, and definitely the bankers control government. That That's a, that's a well-known fact. So anyway, let's get into this, man. See, it's me. That's my American name. You know, I got a Moorish Native American name, but, and then versus the county of San Diego. So uh, this is an order of sua sponte, remanding action to state court. Sua sponte, this basically means on on one's own accord. Basically, the, the judge's own opinion, or the court's own opinion was to send us back to state court because I filed it too late. So the same thing that happened in federal court happened in state court. They said they didn't have any jurisdiction because I filed too late. But again, I didn't know the actions taken against me. So this is, to me, this is all some bullshit that they just refused to address. So I'll just read through this. On August 11, 2016, defendant George Everett Smith Jr. proceeded pro se filed a notice of removal from the state of California Superior Court for the County of San Diego. The state court complaint, complaint alleges a claim against the defendant regarding his child support obligation. Having de reviewed defendant's notice of removal, the court finds it does not have subject matter jurisdiction over this matter and that the removal is procedurally defective which basically means that uh, I didn't follow procedure. I didn't file within, I didn't file an appeal or notice of removal within uh, the time restraints. So, which, which I still don't understand because if I didn't know an action was taken against me, how the fuck was I supposed to appeal? I mean, that's simple logic. <laughs> To anybody living on the planet, I don't know what the fuck these courts are thinking, but that's simple logic to anybody living on the planet. How can I know, how can I file appeal if I don't know somebody's taking action against me and wanted me to come into some Title IV D court, which I got no allegiance to. I'm not a public figure. I'm not a public entity. And I'm not a public trustee of a social security trust. So why do I have to come into court? So anyway, so the discussion, this is where, you know, actually this judge broke it down pretty good, pretty good, except here, the logic is kind of flawed, but this is a lower federal district court. So his actions are only ministerial. Ministerial meaning he has to follow the, the statute of the law to the letter, and especially uh, the court rules, the federal court rules, which I, which I think are the, um, the civil rules of procedure. Yeah, the, the, the federal 
court rules of procedure, yeah. So anyway, um, the federal court is one of limited jurisdiction. Loudermouth versus U.S. Bank National Association, 479 Federal Reporter, 3rd Edition, nine, pages 994, 997, 9th Circuit, 2007. It possesses only that power authorized by the Constitution or a statute. Like I said, they can't interpret the law. They're only operating in a ministerial um, position. Um, ministerial just meaning they can't interpret. They have to just follow the law um, that was handed to them either by Congress, uh, by Congress because, yeah, because the Congress writes a uh, statute. So, all right, see Bender versus Williamsport, Area School District, 475 U.S., 534, 541, 106, Supreme Court, 1326, 89, Lawyer's Edition, Sec Edition, 2nd Edition, 501, 1986. It is constitutionally required to... Uh, required to... Let's see. How do I this? Uh, hold up. Required to... Uh, this paper is kind of weird. Required to raise issues related to federal subject matter jurisdiction. It may do so sua sponte. See uh, Steel Coal, Steel Company versus Citizens of a Better Environment. 523 U.S. 83, 93 to 94. See Indus Tectonics Incorporated versus Aero Alloy. I'm not going to read all the course citation uh, or the case citation. You guys can see it right there. Removal jurisdiction is governed by 28 U.S.C. 1441 at SEC. A state court action can only be removed if it could, could have been originally brought in federal court. So I'm showing you guys this because this judge is actually providing remedies into how to get your case into a federal court if you understand the language that he's speaking in. You have to be able to understand what these people are telling you, especially judges on the federal level, because they'll tell you what the remedy is. They'll tell you what the fuck to do. So thus, for an action to be removed on the basis of a federal question jurisdiction, the complaint must, it, the complaint must establish either that Federal law creates the cause of action or that the plaintiff's right to relief necessarily depends on the resolution of substantial questions of federal law. Franchise Tax Board of California versus Construction Laborers, Vacation Trust for Southern California. Additionally, a federal court also has jurisdiction over action involving citizens of different states when the amount in controversy exceeds $75,000. Uh, 28 U.S.C. 1332. I believe that the judge, that this judge is trying to tell me that he's trying to help me out. He's actually trying to help me out. Now, for whatever reason that was out of my control, I couldn't file the appeal in time, but I believe what this judge is saying here that he... He's trying to help me out. He's telling me exactly how to do this shit. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm fucking uh, telling you guys. So the burden of establishing federal jurisdiction is on the party seeking removal, which would be me and you guys. And the removal statute is strictly construed against removal jurisdiction. Nishimoto versus Fetterman, Bach, Rock, and Associates. Federal jurisdiction must be rejected if there is any doubt as to the right of removal in the first instance. Goss versus Miles. Whether federal jurisdiction exists is governed by the well-pleaded complaint rule. The well-pleaded complaint rule, this is a court rule, is a powerful doctrine that severely limits the number of cases in which state law creates the cause of action that may be initiated in or removed to federal court. Matter of fact, I'm going to have to look this up. 
the well-pleaded complaint rule. Matter of fact, right after I read this, we're going to look that shit up. Uh, at, okay, under this rule, the federal question must be presented on the face of the plaintiff's properly pleaded complaint. Here, defendant indicates in his removal papers that jurisdiction in this court is based on federal question jurisdiction. The presence or absence of a federal question jurisdiction is governed by the well pleaded complaint rule. So they're saying that I didn't answer the federal jurisdiction question. And it's true because I filed this paper before I got paperwork from Amin. Like I just filed this with no affidavit, no nothing. So don't make the same mistake that I did. File it with an affidavit. So that's why he's saying the absence of a federal question. And then by default, uh, if there's an absence of a federal question, then this well-pleaded complaint rule takes precedent, right? So now they're going to govern off the well-pleaded complaint rule, which provides that, let me go back up here, which provides that federal jurisdiction exists only when a federal question is presented on the face of plaintiff's properly pleaded complaint. A review of the state court complaint in this case shows that plaintiff, the San Diego, alleges a single claim under California state law regarding the provision of child support payments. Plaintiff's state court complaint does not present a federal question of law that would provide this court with jurisdiction over the matter. The burden of establishing federal jurisdiction is on the party seeking removal. And the removal statute is strictly construed against removal jurisdiction. Federal jurisdiction must be rejected if there is any doubt as to the right of removal in the first instance. On defendant's civil cover sheet, defendant states plaintiffs violated my, my rights. First and seventh amendments. Document number one, liberally construing the notice of removal and the civil cover sheet, any purported federal rights or claims would be potential counterclaims against the plaintiff. However, counterclaims are not considered in evaluating whether a federal question appears on the face of a plaintiff's complaint. And uh, federal, quest federal question jurisdiction cannot rest upon an actual or anticipated counterclaim. As such, defendant's allegations do not establish federal jurisdiction under 28 U.S.C. 1331. Defendant also fails to establish that this court has diversity jurisdiction pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1332. Uh, defendant is presumably a citizen of California. So this goes back to the video I just made tonight about there's two different fucking United States. There's the United States of America, the Republic, and there's the United States, which is a corporation which is trying to make money through contracts. So defendant is presumably a citizen of California as he provides a California home address as my domicile. Thus, he may not remove this action under 28 U.S.C. 1441b. Removal is permitted in diversity cases only when they just saying I can't remove it according to this statute. Uh, removal permitted in diversity cases only when none of the parties in interest properly joined or served as defendants is a citizen of the state in which such action is brought. In some, defendant has not adequately established a basis for this court's subject matter jurisdiction. The court must remand the case. So, da -da -da -da. All right, so they're saying they didn't have subject matter jurisdiction. And then I did it again, tried to use former paupers, and um, it was actually rejected again. So, yeah, that, that's what it is, man. But uh, I'm keeping this video short. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.